Now is the time of God's favor. Now Now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God, of our salvation. That the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun. And And may may the glory be lifted up. Joyous light of glory. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, 
and let your loving kindness descend on us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host and may glorify you forever. Amen. Amen. reading from Mark chapter 15. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. 
Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace that is the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his clothes, put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Today we see Jesus through worldly eyes. We see how the religious authority see Jesus with worldly eyes when they take Jesus to worldly powers. The chief priests take Jesus to hand him over to the occupying foreign power, Rome, whose head is Pontius Pilate. Here we see a bizarre mixture of state and church where the religion, where the religious authorities have become more worldly and where the worldly powers have become more religious. Because it has now become the custom through Pontius Pilate during the Passover to release for for the people of Israel a prisoner. In this case, they bring before the mob Barabbas, who is an insurrectionist. And Barabbas sees the world through worldly eyes. He is taking things into his own hands, matters into his own hands by uh, murdering Roman officials and their families, as is well documented in the first century. Insurrectionists were terrorists. They would go into the marketplaces and kill people by stealth and then run. The worldly wise saying that one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter is true because 
For Pontius Pilate, this person is a terrorist, but for the mob, he is their freedom fighter, willing to give his life and take life to liberate Israel from their foreign Roman occupying authority. Pontius Pilate would not be in his position and maintain his position unless he was a very savvy politician, unless he had a street-wise manner of doing things. He would not maintain his power unless he was able to come up with creative ways at throwing a bone to the Israelites so that they might not create and cause a riot. The religious authority see Jesus with worldly eyes because they see him as an imposter are not what the Messiah, uh, what they believe him, what he should be. Pontius Pilate is amazed at Jesus because he only sees Jesus through worldly eyes. He's amazed that Jesus wouldn't stand up for himself and remain silent, wouldn't say something to preserve his own life. And of course, Pontius Pilate, that's all he cares about, is maintaining his power and self-preservation. He cares more about the polls than he does about the truth. He cares more about politics than he does justice. Even later, betraying his own lack of godly wisdom when he asks Jesus, what is truth? The mob prefers a worldly liberator, Pontius uh, Barabbas, over Jesus, who is the true Messiah. And the soldiers salute Jesus as you would a commander. They clothe him in purple. They spit upon him. They kneel before him, mocking him with their posture, but also with their words, when they say, Hail, King of the Jews. True words, but their hearts are poisoned and their hearts are far from God, seeing Jesus only with these worldly eyes. The irony of this passage is that Pontius Pilate is actually speaking to one who is higher in authority. Jesus will remind him later that he would not have his position of authority unless granted to him by the emperor and even by God himself. Pontius Pilate is a steward of his position. He is placed there by God to preserve life and justice. The mob Also, ironically, who wants Jesus to be crucified and cries out for his crucifixion, they want Jesus to die so that they would be liberated from further oppression. Ironically, it's in Jesus' death that they are truly liberated. But not only them. Jesus dies also for the Roman authority and occupiers. Jesus dies for every nation, every tribe, people who speak any tongue, and every people. The soldiers also foreshadow what Jesus will do for them. Jesus, through his death and resurrection, through our baptism into Christ, Jesus clothes us in robes of his righteousness that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. And it's at the name of Jesus that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. He's not only the King of the Jews, he's the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is, as John the Baptist says, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace.
peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and are at rest, let us give thanks to the Lord. To you, O Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, God forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen.